May and Amy by Sue McClamont. I believe my parents' union was forged through shared histories of broken homes and overbearing single mothers, unusual in 1950s New Zealand. My two grandmothers, May and Amy, both lived a long way from my family and we saw little of them when I was growing up. I was slightly in awe of our Irish Nana May, but also fascinated by all her rituals. A small wiry woman, May was a workhorse. When not tending to her immaculate garden, she was inside cleaning. Cleanliness was next to godliness, and in her crisp ivory pinafore, May was a cross between matron and a nun. White was May's colour, her long cotton wool-like hair always coiled into a tight bun. Alabaster arms wrung every drop of water from the washing. No mangle required. In the kitchen, she starched and ironed, shrouded in clouds of billowing steam. In the evenings, May finally relaxed, smoking long, hand-rolled cigarettes. May was tough. She had divorced her drunkard husband and put her children through the shame and humiliation of a public excommunication from their Catholic school. You didn't mess with May. And what of Amy, our English granny, the paternal grandmother, the daughter of a prosperous grocer, she was schooled in all the prerequisite skills essential to make a good marriage. Excelling in painting, needlework and playing the piano, Amy had expectations. Indeed, she married a doctor and had two children. But her husband fell for another woman and wanted a divorce. Amy refused and never budged. Amy worked hard into the night, sewing to eke out an existence for herself and her dependents. Ruddy complexion, bloodshot eyes and pinpricked fingers. Red was Amy's colour. A tall, thin woman with a nervous disposition. Over the years, she became increasingly unhappy, angry and bitter. Inflamed hands, swollen knuckles. Blighted by painful arthritis, she no longer painted, sewed or played the piano. As she slipped into senile dementia, Amy was dispatched by her offspring to the manor, the nursing home where she lived out her remaining days. I wish I'd known May and Amy better, as I tried to piece together an incomplete jigsaw from snippets of potentially apocryphal information. They remain an enigma to me. Two women who, despite obvious differences, shared similar hardships and had more in common with each other than just the three letters in their names.